Well, Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, some of the most insufferable people on planet Earth. Now they have another excuse for being in the news. Leave us alone. We want privacy. We want privacy. Okay, so as it turns out, South Park was right yet again. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, it is astonishing how they chase after cameras while claiming that they are attempting to run away from cameras. The latest iteration of this story is that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are now claiming that they were involved in a near-fatal paparazzi chase in New York City. Now, this is all part and parcel of the broader narrative that has been presented by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Prince Harry says that he is able to be sort of in a a, a bimbo idiot 'er ne'er-do-well who abandons all family loyalty because the paparazzi killed Princess Di. If you read his memoir, this is his claim, is that Princess Di didn't, Actually, she she wasn't killed by the driver of the limousine in which she was riding, who was traveling at a high rate of speed through a tunnel. No, what what actually happened is that the paparazzi caused his mom to be killed. And he himself has been victimized by the paparazzi. And his whole life is about how the paparazzi have victimized him. Meanwhile, Meghan Markle has been cosplaying as Princess Diana in a wide variety of settings. She's wearing outfits that are extremely similar to Princess Diana at the end of, of Prince Harry's book, she goes to Princess Diana's grave. It's, it's, it's all very strange. Okay, well, now they're taking this to the next step because they've decided that the only way that they can be perceived as victims, because they are not victims, they are, in fact, some of the least victimized people on planet Earth. This is just one aspect of being a prince and then of being a second-rate actress who marries a prince and becomes a princess and then living in California where you make ridiculously narcissistic documentaries about yourself and then get paid by Netflix to do so. Well, now they have to regain victimhood status and attention. And the only way really to do that is to claim that they are being brutally victimized by, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, the paparazzi. So according to page six, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are, quote, extremely upset and shaken after being involved in a near catastrophic two-hour paparazzi chase in New York City on Tuesday night. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who are traveling with Markle's mom, Doria Ragland, were pursued by photographers after leaving the Ziegfeld Theater where the former actress was honored by Gloria Steinem at the Women of Vision Awards in Manhattan, which sounds absolutely insufferable. An event with both Meghan Markle and Gloria Steinem? Wow, I need that like a fish needs a bicycle. The trio left the event in an SUV around 10 p.m. They were immediately followed by around 12 paparazzi, according to page six. This is what they were told. They eventually decided to ditch their original vehicle and jump into a yellow cab in the hopes of evading photographers, according to a source. Okay, so first of all, (laughs) this time. Okay, as a person, who travels with security nearly all of the time. Let me tell you a thing we have never done. A thing we have never done is get from a secured vehicle into a yellow cab to evade photographers. That's stupid. Like, unbelievably stupid. First of all, you're in the car. So if somebody is trying to photograph you and you are in a car, typically these cars have shaded windows. So what? We're going to get a picture of the car or a picture of you getting out of the car and going back to your hotel. Okay, like, where were you planning to go? And and I'm sorry for the whole singing in the rain bit where you're like running from car to car across the tops of buses and stuff, but I don't believe you. The insider alleges that one cameraman hit a car while another almost ran over an NYPD officer during the near-fatal chase. So basically, this is now a, a some, something out directly out of the movies. It started off with 12 paparazzi, then ended up with four chasing Megan, Harry, and Doria, the insider tells us. The insider Suspiciously sounded a lot like Meghan Markle. The security tried their best to lose photographers. Once in the taxi, Harry used his cell phone to record the ensuing melee. We're told security was also recording to gather evidence. Paparazzi were confronted by uniformed police officers, but ignored warnings and continued chasing the trio, we hear. A rep for the Sussex claimed to page six Wednesday last night, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Miss Raglan were involved in a near catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. This relentless pursuit lasting over two hours. So first of all, two hour pursuit? How long was OJ's chase with the LAPD? I don't think it was two hours. Two hours in New York? First of all, you can't drive more than five feet in New York without hitting a red light or traffic. So I'm confused. How high speed was this chase precisely? Have you been to New York? Like, what are they going? Eight miles an hour and then stopping dead and bang your head against the back of the <laughs> This relentless pursuit lasting over two hours and apparently involving Jack Bauer, resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers. While being a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety. One source calls the incident incident absolutely shocking and says Raglan, who's 66 years old, was particularly terrified by the ordeal. Everyone is still upset to say at least it was horrific, the source tells us. Wow. Just, just, wow. Um, well, 
Now questions have emerged. By the way, this is happening right as the Duke of Sussex police bodyguards were removed after he stopped being a working royal in 2020. And now they are attempting to get the royals to pay for their security again. So this is all part and parcel of a broader attempt to get other people to pay their bills, apparently. Before we get to that, I, I have a dog. Our dog is very cute. His name is Happy. He is a Havanese. He is really sweet with the kids. We want him to live a long and healthy life. This is why we've started giving him rough greens every morning. The dog food you've been giving your dog, that's the dead food. It doesn't have a lot of nutritional value. Look at it. It's brown food. Have you ever smelled? It's just, mm. but green food has nutritional value and rough greens boost Happy's food back to life. It can do the same for your dog. You don't actually have to go out and replace your new dog food. Just sprinkle rough greens on their food every day. It contains all the necessary vitamins and minerals your dog isn't getting from their regular dog food. Happy likes his rough greens. He is a good doggo. He is, again, we want him to be healthy. He's, he's, he, he was groomed yesterday. He was actually like groomed. Like they actually made him look all poofy and cute. He's, he's a cute dog. Rough greens is the only supplement your dog will ask for by name. Rough greens. You get it. Naturopathic doctor, Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is so confident this product will improve your dog's health. He's offering my listeners a free Jumpstart trial bag. Go to freeroughgreens.com slash Ben. Let Rough Greens bring your dog's food back to life. That's free, R-U-F-F greens.com slash Ben today or call 833-MY-DOG-33. That's 833-MY-DOG-33. Now questions have begun stacking up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The NYPD who assisted Prince Harry and Mark with transportation, according to Fox News, shared their account with Fox News Digital. There were numerous photographers that made their transport challenging, said Julian Phillips, a deputy commissioner of public information. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination. There were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries, or arrests in regard. So we had heard that somebody hit a car, right? And also that, that they almost hit like an NYPD officer. The NYPD is looking through traffic camera footage and security footage to piece together what transpired. Uh, apparently, there is a video that shows the chaotic scene the night of Harry and Markle's alleged chase, but it doesn't show any near collisions. At the time of publication, no footage of the alleged car chase had been made available. In fact, they went and they interviewed the cab driver, a person named Suk Charn Singh, who told the AP he instantly recognized his passengers. They were following us the whole time, he said to the paparazzi, but he said he wouldn't call it a chase. Singh, the cab driver, was on 67th near an NYPD precinct when a security guard waved him down. Singh pulled the yellow taxi to the curb and in came Harry, Megan, and her mom. Now, again, I don't understand the strategy here. I really don't understand the strategy. So security got them out of a secure vehicle, put them on the street, and then waved down a passing cab. They had this look on their faces, he said. They were about to give their destination when a garbage truck blocked their path. All of a sudden, paparazzi came out and started taking pictures, he said. One of the royals told them to circle back to the precinct. They didn't say much, Singh said. They asked my name, and then after that, Harry said, thanks and have a good day. They paid $17 in fare, and uh, they gave a $50, a $50 tip, which is nice. So apparently, he just kind of went around the block. But that doesn't sound like a um, two-hour near-catastrophic chase involving the paparazzi. According to royal watcher Omid Scobie, the paparazzi were confronted by police multiple times as they chased the royal couple who were on their way to a private residence where they were staying. Scobie alleged on Twitter the photographers drove on a sidewalk, ran through red lights, reversed down a one-way street, photographed the couple while driving and illegally blocked a moving vehicle. And the mayor was like, um, I, he said, <laughs> the mayor said, I find it hard to believe there was a two-hour high-speed chase, but we'll find out the exact duration of it. If it's 10 minutes, a 10-minute chase is extremely dangerous in New York City. So, yeah, man, again, the, the cabbie told the, the post that he said um, it seemed like it was um, it wasn't scary. He said it was a little crazy. They were trying at home. But, you know, the, the, the kind of notion he said, he also added, I never felt like I was in danger. It wasn't like a car chase in a movie. They're quiet and seem scared, but it's New York. It's safe. And now the reason all of this is, is important is because, again, claims of victimhood in American society are the new currency of the realm. The way that you get attention is by claiming that you're a victim. And, um, and I've noticed there are a lot more pictures of Harry and Meghan in the papers than there have been any time recently. This also changes the narrative from the coronation where Harry was kind of sidelined. It also allows for the media to do its job and talk about how American society is actually super duper racist. CNN correspondent Salma Abdulaziz was talking about Meghan Markle and saying it's actually racist. It's racist to talk about Megxit. Right, which is a, a pun on Brexit because it's Meghan Markle leaving Bre Mexit. But that, that's racist, apparently. Again, I just have to emphasize how huge that exit was and how much it was criticized by the press here in the UK, some calling it Megxit. That was seen as a very racist and sexist way to characterize that exit, pinning it just on Meghan rather than Prince Harry. There was a strong sense among communities of color here that she was being treated poorly by the press because of her racial background. 
And it's all about it's all about victimhood. It's all about victimhood. And our society has now decided that because victimhood is the currency of the realm, well, you can make a buck off of it. All righty, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into the mailbag if you're not a member. Become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout. Get two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.